the 10 largest Medicare Advantage providers have overbilled the government. Six of the 10 have been accused of fraud by the government or company whistleblowers. This comes as the number of people enrolled in the privatized system continue to grow. Projections show that by next year, more than half of all Medicare beneficiaries will be enrolled in a private plan. Under the system, health insurers get more government funding for sicker patients, which has given the companies an incentive to make patients appear more ill than they actually are. United Health, Humana, Kaiser, and other health insurance companies have been sued for fraud for overdiagnosing patients to bump up profits. The cost to taxpayers is staggering. Overbilling by health insurance costs the government an estimated 12 to 25 billion dollars in 2020. The New York Times reports doctors at Kaiser were offered bottles of champagne and bonuses if they added additional illnesses to the medical records of their patients so the company could make more money. Joining us now is Wendell Potter, former executive for the health insurance companies Cigna and Humana. Potter is now the president of the Center for Health and Democracy and the president of Business Leaders for Healthcare Transformation. He's author of the book Deadly Spin, an insurance company insider, speaks out on how corporate PR is killing healthcare and deceiving Americans. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Wendell, joining us from Philadelphia. Um, if you can start off by explaining uh, how Medicare Advantage works, many people might say, oh, they thought that was a government program for people 65 and older. Yeah, it's, it's, it's important to note that it is neither Medicare nor is it an advantage. Uh, it is, I think, will be recognized in years to come as probably the biggest heist, the biggest fraud, the biggest uh, transfer of wealth from taxpayers, middle income, low income uh, Americans, from them to corporate executives and shareholders. It is a plan that has been in the works uh, or has been around for about 20 years. It was uh, born during the George W. Bush administration, when Republicans controlled Congress, and they were determined to uh, start privatizing the Medicare program. And as you noted, uh, now, 20 years later, is to the point that almost half, and in some uh, cities and districts, uh, well more than half, already are enrolled in this program. It is a private program. It is operated by private insurance companies, most of them are for-profit. In fact, this year, over 80 percent of the enrollment in these plans uh, were people enrolling in for-profit plans. Uh, they're lured into these plans with deceptive advertising. Uh, the plans feature things that are common in private plans, but not in traditional Medicare, such as prior authorization. Doctors have to get permission, in many cases, from uh, the insurance company before they can treat their patients. Uh, inadequate networks, particularly as people get older and sicker, and very, very high out-of-pocket cost if, uh, if people uh, knowingly or inadvertently go out of network. So it is a, 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 a program that absolutely should be called disadvantage. And Wendell Potter, it's uh, to me, it's amazing that the the health care system in this country right now. When you go to a general practitioner, they they basically are constantly referring you to specialists who always then want to do more tests, and it's the testing process of all of these specialists that drive up these costs. Uh, and as you say, on television, almost every single night, there are ads trying to lure senior citizens uh, into these uh, Medicare Advantage uh, uh, programs, this privatization uh, of Medicare. Uh, why isn't the government exercising more regulation or control over these, uh, this process, especially the one that, as the Times reported, piling on uh, uh, imagined or, 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 or badly uh, uh, badly documented illnesses? Well, it's not because Congress has never seen this kind of information before. Uh, many uh, governmental organizations, and uh, 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 like the uh, OIG, uh, the GAO, MedPAC, which, is, which advises uh, Congress on, on Medicare issues and payment issues, and uh, the Department of Justice, which has intervened in a number of these whistleblower lawsuits against these companies, 
Uh, that's been uh, something that's been going on for a long time. And there also, by the way, have been other important journalists who've taken this on and done this investigation, like Fred Schulte at the at Kaiser Health News, Trudy Lieberman at the Center for Health uh, Journalism. Uh, so they've known this, but they've turned a blind eye in many cases because of the massive amounts of our money that these big corporations are spending to lobby Congress, uh, to uh, uh, throw money into their campaigns for re-election. Uh, and to uh, and to propaganda campaigns and very very misleading uh, uh, advertising as, as you just mentioned. Open enrollment will begin in just a few weeks uh, for uh, uh, Medicare eligible beneficiaries, and you will see uh, just a, a barrage, a constant barrage of ads uh, from these companies uh, that uh, are uh, it, they do not tell the truth. They leave out important details like I, some that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so that's how they pull it off. Uh, and regulatory capture, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, has been uh, uh, really asleep at the will. They, Congress actually has given CMS more authority uh, to crack down on this fraudulent program, but they've just turned a blind eye. That is a classic example of uh, regulatory capture. What, reg what is regulatory capture, Wendell? What that means is that uh, the uh, companies, the corporations that uh, administra administrative uh, offices like uh, CMS, the Center for Medicare Services, the health, uh, and Health and Human Services, they have such influence over these, uh, uh, these agencies uh, that they don't act on behalf of, of Americans. They act on behalf uh, of corporations to protect their profits. Uh, one of the uh, administrators of CMS uh, some years ago uh, went straight from that job into uh, uh, the uh, insurance industry as head of America's health insurance plans, which is called AHIP. Uh, they also have staffed, uh, member, former members of Congress have staffed front groups uh, for the industry. There's one called the Better Medicare Alliance. Uh, a former uh, Pennsylvania congresswoman, a Democrat, was the first to head that up. So that's how it happens. Uh, there's this revolving door uh, between private industry and government, uh, and uh, uh, massive, again, massive amounts of money that uh, fund all this lobbying uh, and, uh, and propaganda. And Wendell Potter, you had your own mother disenrolled from the Medicare Advantage plan over a decade ago. Why did that happen, and yeah. uh, what was the impact on her health as a result? This is something that every senior should know. Uh, they, these companies go after people when they're uh, younger and healthier uh, with kind of a siren call that uh, you can enroll in these plans for no money. Uh, you can actually get money put back into your Social Security account, as we hear from uh, people like Joe Namath and William Shatner and Jimmy J.J. Walker. Uh, but the truth is, as you get older and sicker, then you become aware of just the disadvantages of this program. Uh, my mother broke her hip. She needed to have uh, rehab and skilled nursing uh, services for a while. Uh, when we looked at what was available to her in the provider network, it was incredibly inadequate. Uh, so I worked with my mom to uh, get her out of a Medicare Advantage uh, plan. It was one that was operated by United Healthcare, uh, and they mark it in conjunction with AARP, uh, which is an outrage, in my view. Uh, but uh, uh, she, uh, but, but there's a problem there because when you do that and you're older uh, and you wait, you know, years uh, after being becoming eligible for Medicare, uh, it's harder and more expensive to get a Medicare supplement policy to help cover your out of pockets. Uh, so we did that knowing that we had to pay a lot of money, but at least she was able to get the care that she needed at a quality uh, facility where she got the rehab and skilled nursing care that she needed, uh, which she would not have gotten had she stayed in that Medicare Advantage program. I'm confident my mom lived uh, uh, additional years because of what we were able to do. Mm. Wendell Potter, um, finally, what should Congress do to prevent this kind of fraud? And we're moving into the midterm elections. There is almost no discussion of Medicare for all in the corporate media. I don't know if it's because every five or six minutes they break for a commercial for some drug company, uh, for no, some new illness that has been defined. Um, but what has to happen right now? Well, there are some important bills that have been introduced and some I trust will be introduced before too long. 
uh, Congresswoman Katie Porter from California has introduced an important bill that would uh, uh, force the government uh, uh, and force these plans to be more forthcoming, more transparent, to provide information and data that they're just withholding from, from the government. Uh, uh, it should not even be called Medicare Advantage. Like I said earlier, it's not Medicare, nor is it an advantage. So I think there should be legislation that should bar these companies from even using the name Medicare. Uh, there are some good members of Congress who uh, understand this. Uh, Congresswoman Porter, Congressman Mark Pocan, uh, Pramila Jayapal, uh, 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 Jan Schakowsky. They're all aware of this, and they unfortunately are in the minority, even among Democrats. But I think that New York Times story and some of the other things that advocates are beginning to do uh, will wake them up and force them to get on the stick and do something. Uh, Congresswoman Jayapal has been the lead sponsor, as you may know, of Medi uh, a Medicare for All bill. Uh, she gets it. Others get it, too. Uh, but uh, uh, this is going to be an important step along the way. There is going to be a big, uh, uh, frankly, uh, effort by industry to say we should have Medicare Advantage for all, which would be the greatest travesty, I think, that this country could ever experience. Wendell Potter, I want to thank you for being with us. Uh, we'll link to that New York Times expose. Wendell Potter is former executive for health insurance companies Cigna and Humana, now serving as president of the Center for Health and Democracy and the president of Business Leaders for Healthcare Transformation.